முத்தமிழ் அறிஞருக்கும் இவரது குடும்பத்தினருக்குமான தொடர்பு மூன்று தலைமுறைகளை கடந்து நிற்கிறது தேசத்தின் உச்சத்திலிருந்து சீரும் சிங்கங்களாய் வலம்பரும் அப்துல்லா குடும்பத்தின் வாரிசு திரு உமர் அப்துல்லா அவர்களை வாழ்த்துறை வழங்க அன்புடன் அழைக்கிறோம் வி ப்ரௌட்லி வெல்கம் லைன் ஆஃப் காஷ்மீர் திரு உமர் அப்துல்லா டு டெலிவர் ஸ்பெஷல் அட்ரஸ் ஜனாப் எம் கே ஸ்டாலின்ஜி ஜனாப் விஜயன்ஜி ஜனாப் ராகுல் காந்திஜி ஜனாப் தேஜஸ்வி யாதவ்ஜி ஜனாப் டி ஆர் பாலுஜி ஜனாப் துராய் முருகன்ஜி மொத்தர்மா கனிமோசி கருணாநிதி சாய்பா டிக்னிட்ரீஸ் ஆன் த டயஸ் அசெம்பிள்ட் லேடிஸ் அண்ட் ஜென்டல்மன் வணக்கம் அண்ட் ஆதாப் it is indeed an honor and a pleasure for me to have traveled from the cold climes of kashmir to the extremely warm both in terms of climate and in terms of the love and hospitality here uh, to chennai today sirinagar just to give you an idea uh, had snowfall 2 days ago last night the temperature was minus 2 uh, today here in chennai i arrive and it is 35 degrees so you'll understand why it's a little on the the warm side but uh, more than the temperature i'm here because of the warmth that exists in your hearts and particularly in the heart of our host the honorable chief minister of tamil nadu shri stalin ji and i'll i'll come to that but first and foremost i would like to congratulate him for the release of his autobiography one among us it is uh, indeed uh, an apt title for a book written by someone who has shown that he is indeed one amongst you one amongst us one amongst the people of tamil nadu and he is not there by virtue of name he is not there by virtue of inheritance he is there by virtue of work he is there by virtue of commitment he is there by virtue of a track record you don't become one amongst us because you are born to a particular family being one amongst a family opens a door for you but it doesn't keep the door open you become one amongst us you become one amongst a people because the people identify with you because the people reward you for the work that you have done they reward you for your struggle and in that there is no doubt that chief minister stalin ji has struggled he started if you go through the book and i obviously do not understand the language that it is written in but i have had parts of it explained to me he started not only at an extremely young age i thought i and tejasvi perhaps started early but in the book i see uh, that the honorable chief minister started at the age of 13 and that too at the very grassroot level in the assembly constituency from where he then uh, fought and won his assembly election not only that he struggled through detention uh, i have been uh, detained more recently Uh, then he was uh, but uh, one year uh, of an unjust detention uh, in jail is also something that adds uh, to that struggle it adds to to building uh, that character and then of course his commitment to social justice his commitment to empowering the people of tamil nadu to ensuring that development reaches to every corner of his state is uh, perhaps best Uh, exemplified and best explained in the recent victory of the party he heads of the dmk in the urban local body elections in tamil nadu which the party swept and swept in such a resounding manner that even as far as as jammu and kashmir we were reading that the dmk made inroads into parts of tamil nadu that traditionally had never voted for the dmk 
but voted for the first time, this time for the DMK, looking at the commitment of the party to social justice, to empowering people, and that, I believe, is why when he chooses uh, the title of his book, One Amongst Us, it is not an exaggeration. It is something that the people of Tamil Nadu, through the use of their vote, have shown that, yes, he is considered amongst, one amongst you, one amongst us, one amongst the people of Tamil Nadu, and therefore, I would like to congratulate him uh, for this book and hope uh, that he has a long and successful political career so that politicians like to write in volumes. Uh, we don't like to write just one. So this, I hope, is the first volume, and over the course of a long and illustrious career, we will have many opportunities to release volume two, volume three, volume four, and so on and so forth. So there will be many more volumes of the book. Now I come uh, to another reason why I am here. In times of adversity, one knows who one's friends are. The people of Jammu and Kashmir, myself, my father, we went through a period of adversity that we could have seldom imagined. I don't think any of us thought that we would see what we did on the 5th of August 2019. And that's when we woke up to who our real friends were. Because a lot of people who we thought, thought were friends were silent. A lot of people who we thought would speak up at the unjust way in which Jammu and Kashmir were treated, was treated, said nothing. A lot of people who we had great close personal relations with not only were silent, but were actually complicit and supportive of what happened on the 5th of August 2019. Yet as far as Tamil Nadu is from Jammu and Kashmir geographically, the way in which the voice of Jinnab Stalin Sahab, of his colleagues, of the people of Tamil Nadu, was heard by the people of Jammu and Kashmir, criticizing and condemning what was done to the people of Jammu and Kashmir, the way in which we were detained, the way in which we were locked up, the way in which the constitution was completely dismembered, is something that we will never forget. And that is why I am here, not only in my personal capacity, not only on behalf of my father, but on behalf of the people of Jammu and Kashmir to say, Stalin Saab, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank the DMK. Thank you to the people of Tamil Nadu for your friendship, for your support. And all I can say is that we are an extremely small state. We are an extremely small political party. We are very far from where you are. But if there is ever a time when you need us, if there is ever a time when you need us to speak for you, to speak with you, to stand with you, we will be with you come rain, come snow. We will be with you shoulder to shoulder to show that as you proved, a friend in need is a friend indeed, and this is something that we will never forget. Our nation stands at a crucial juncture today. The very idea of what we stand for faces an onslaught. Today we are told that we no longer have a right to choose. That somehow the freedom to choose is not ours to enjoy. Whether it is the freedom to choose whether to follow a religion or not. And if to follow a religion, then how much of it to follow? Even that today must be dictated to us. As an individual, I believe that it was my right to choose. As a Hindu, I should be able to choose whether I want to wear saffron robes or not, whether I want to sport a tilak or not. As a Sikh, I believe that it is my right to choose whether to tie a turban or not. As a Muslim, I believe it is my right to choose whether to wear a cap or sport a beard or wear a burqa or a, skull or a, or a, or a scarf or a hijab. Because that as an individual is between me and my God. 
Yet for some reason today in this country that we call India, that choice, that freedom is to be denied to us. The, cho the, the, the freedom to choose what language I wish to speak, whether I wish to speak, to speak to my people in Kashmiri, in Urdu, in Hindi, in Tamil, in English. Somehow I am being told that that choice, that freedom threatens the idea of India. How I choose to dress, whether I wear a veshti, whether I wear a kurta pajama, whether I wear jeans or a t-shirt, that somehow that choice, that freedom, that offends the idea of India. But to my mind, it is that very freedom, that very choice, that is the idea of India. The diversity of India. The diversity of India, north to south, east to west, that allows me to choose where I live, how I live, what I eat, what religion I follow, what I wear. That is the idea of India. And if that choice is taken away, then that idea of India is being taken away from me. And it is that idea of India that we must protect. India that we must protect. India is too large a country for some homogeneous idea of India to prevail on everybody. It is a similar onslaught in the idea of what allows the government of India, how you govern a country as diverse as India. India as a federal unit is enshrined in our constitution. Yet there is a continuous onslaught on the powers of the state to decide for themselves what is in the interests of the people of Tamil Nadu, of Kerala, of Jammu and Kashmir. If the ideas of the government of India are to succeed, then tomorrow as Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Jinnab you know, Stalin Sahab will not, have to, will not have an ability to choose who his DG or Chief Secretary will be. The Chief Minister of Kerala will be sitting and chairing a, chief, a, a cabinet meeting and suddenly a call from Delhi will come and his Chief Secretary will be removed. Is this the idea of what, of what a federal structure looks like? Is this respect for states? Is this how we are going to strengthen the idea of India? By disempowering people? See, what starts in Jammu and Kashmir does not end in Jammu and Kashmir. The experiments of Jammu and Kashmir then get utilized in other parts of the country. So I'm, I, I'm here not just as, as, as a, a victim of what has been done, but as a warning of what can be done. My state was divided into two parts and reduced to a union territory without the consent of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. They were not asked whether this is something they wanted. This is the first time in the history of India that a state was downgraded to a union territory and without so much as the permission of the people of Jammu and Kashmir, it was rendered into two different parts. Not only did the governor take on the powers of the assembly, but then in turn gave himself the powers of the constituent assembly to make changes to Jammu and Kashmir. What stops them tomorrow from doing the same to Tamil Nadu or to Kerala? What stops them tomorrow from declaring governor's rule and the, the chief minister taking on the powers of the, uh, the, sorry, the governor taking on the powers of the assembly and then unilaterally deciding that Tamil Nadu will be split into three parts and what will you do? Therefore, it is very important that like-minded parties, like those represented on the dais today and those who are not here, that believe in the idea of India, that believe in the idea of India as a country that is united because of its diversity, that is united because we are different north to south, east to west, because what unites us is the idea of the ideals that are enshrined in the country that is Bharat, that is India. And that is what I hope that together we all can protect. And that is the message that I bring with me from the people of Jammu and Kashmir, that what started in Jammu and Kashmir may not end in Jammu and Kashmir. 
and therefore it is important that we continue our struggle it is a it is a right struggle it is a just struggle it is it is an imbalanced struggle because the fight we wage is not against a political party it is against an entire machinery tejasvi made mention of it in his speech when he talked about how institutions have been completely eroded and institutional autonomy has been done away with and therefore the fight that we are waging the struggle that we are waging is not an easy one perhaps it's not even a, a, a fair one but it is definitely a just one and i believe that is why opportunities like this that give somebody like me from jammu and kashmir a chance to come here and talk to people all the way as far south as as chennai are are important ones because it allows us to 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 uh, to reinforce what we believe and what we must continue to do and therefore uh, i would uh, like to conclude by once again committing uh, our selves to the friendship to the relationship it's a it's a generational old relationship this relationship that i am here is not a new one it's not my father it started from my grandfather my family has a very close relationship uh, with the state of tamil nadu my grandfather was was uh, detained here and therefore uh, all i can say is that i hope uh, that the idea of india that we hold dear to our hearts is the india that we will give to our children and grandchildren in the inheritance that we pass on to them and i'm sure as long as we have leaders like shri stalin and his colleagues here uh, tamil nadu will be a bastion of strong support and strong message of the idea of india in its diversity and in everything that makes it special once again my heartfelt congratulations to jinab stalin saab for his book Oh, before i finish i understand that tomorrow is the honorable chief minister's birthday <laughs> ordinarily traveling from kashmir kashmir is famous for shawls but shawls can only be used in very cold climate you don't have cold climate here so when i was thinking what can i bring for the honorable chief minister as a token from the people of jammu and kashmir for him for his birthday i thought there's no point giving him a shawl because if i give him a shawl it will go in the cupboard and not come out and therefore i have brought a very small carpet from kashmir as a symbol of our love and our affection for the honorable chief minister which i hope he will accept and i look forward to one day welcoming shri stalin also to kashmir so that we can have a similar function there thank you all very much thank you I'm honored with your presence and such an intense special addresser thank you so much